Max and Joe. Edge Max Joe. Edge Max, Edge, Max Joe. and Joe. YouTube live show with Edge Max and Joe. With a fight up and ready, fight up and ready to go. Edge Max, Edge Max and Joe. Edge Max Joe. Edge Max and Joe. Edge Max Joe. Edge Max, Edge, Joe. Max and Joe. YouTube live show. What's up, everyone? It's another episode of Double O Single S, Out of System, Gage, Max, Joe, and Rad Doe. <laughs> from here. <laughs> actually, that's actually a pretty good nickname. I think we might keep that, actually. Double O Single S, baby. I sound like James Bond when you say that, dude. Bond. James Bond. Dude, Max, <laughs> we're receiving, we're, we're so big right now that we're starting to receive some hate. Yeah, I love that. I'm all about it. Dude, that, that was gnarly last – like, you've been putting up some fire. Song. Yeah, man. And then just, like, so much hate. We got it on our YouTube video, and then now we got it on the Instagram. So now we got, we got hate. And, and our response to that, it's our show, baby. We do what we want. We love yeah. it. Yee. We love the fans it. out there. You're just fanning the, the creative flames of my mind. <laughs> just, in the fireplace up here, it's raging. It's a forest fire is what it is. Going to come in with a masterpiece here. Yeah. All right, so we're going to get to a new segment that we like to call Keeping It Real. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. We've had some incidences in the past that kind of led to us come up with this idea. Joe came up with a genius idea here of what are we going to be talking about today, Joe? Parents getting involved with coaches, Joe's both at the favorite. junior level and then the college level. Oh. Max, I want, I want to get your opinion. You, you were telling me earlier that you had some good instances that you want to bring up, and I'll give you a reaction to, my, uh, to the story you have. So, Max, why don't you rattle off a story for us here? For sure, man. I think that, honestly, it's a, it can be a big mistake. Parents don't realize how big of a mistake they're making when they go and do communication to the coach on behalf of their child. When you have a kid that's playing club sports, I'm talking like 14 years old, and older, like, it's okay if they want to talk to the coach about logistics of practice and stuff like that. But if it comes anything about playing time, I think that that's going to be really bad for your kid. And even if your heart's in the right place, you want the best for your kid, you got to let them learn to articulate themselves and figure out how to meet with people and talk to them about that stuff. And it's, I feel like parents usually never consider, my kid could maybe just be better. Maybe they're just not as good as I think they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that that's not the growth mindset. That's not the the Dustin Watton way that we were talking about before. What do you think, Joe? Perception is so big. And uh, you hear our, our coach at University of Hawaii, Charlie Wade, and even Josh Walker, we get into this, the perception of your reality. And what that means is your understanding of where you are in your career and your life, the relationships you have, and you need to understand how to interact and how to communicate with people. And some, like, you, there, I think most of the issues come is when you go ask people and they just don't understand why they're in a certain situation, like why they're the third string outside or why they're not yeah. on the floor as a setter. It's like you, you guys need to be able – and they, like you said, it starts, the player needs to be able to have that conversation. So I'm not saying coaches are right all the time. I'm not saying their perception's right. But you need to be able to go and have that conversation with your coach to show them why you are right or – get an understanding of why he why the coach uh is see sees the way that he does and i feel like he, he does yeah yeah for sure and you got to remember it's the coaches that's like they're in charge so anything you're gonna like you got to make sure yeah. that you're respectful the whole time and just the way that you deliver anything about that is like i feel like super important people go in their guns ablaze and like why am i not getting in and stuff like that it's just you're setting yourself up for failure doing that i think why even the coach even if you have literally the worst coach in the world he yeah. still has the say of who goes on the floor. He submits the lineup yeah, yeah, yeah. card. He sure. submits whatever. And so you sitting there and just complaining about it and not going and, and having mom and dad go try to fight your fight for you is not going to solve no. anything. Because it no. as, like I, I am the son of a coach and my brother is the son of a coach. And so we know how like those relationships go. And the coach isn't going to respect you more or be more understanding if the parent comes up. Like the parent, the coach wants that relationship between him and the player. And the parent, like, I know for a fact that coaches 
always respect more and they appreciate more and they're will, more willing to give opportunities to kids who can advocate for themselves and who, who fear, all right, this is what I need to do. They have an understanding, all right, this is what I lack at. I need to get better. They go and get better at that and they do what they need to do and then they come back and uh, prove to the coach that they can do it. And that, from a, uh, any, any like decent coach, will be able to see that uh, and will really appreciate and give that player the sure. opportunity. And a coach isn't going to – and the other thing is coaches don't not put you on the floor because you're the best player on the team. So if you're sitting there trying to argue like, oh, he's the seventh or eighth best player on the team, then, like, then you have a lot of work to do and you need to be, you need to be push yourself to be you, – your goal needs to be the best player. If you're the best player on the team, you're not sitting on the bench. Yep. It's always it's always a people like oh man I'm like the best player talking the most smack and stuff that are always like that always causes yeah. problems. So if sure. if you're a player that maybe doesn't get a lot of playing time and let's say you let's say you do have a coach that you feel is unfair and if you're a parent you should definitely talk to your you talk to your kid about it at the club level and he has to kind of he has to kind of get through that like you said learn to articulate himself exactly like yeah. even if it is unfair you got to learn to kind of deal with that because when you go through life with this volleyball or anything. That's going to yeah. happen. And, you, and you're not always going to have your parents there to kind of deal with it. So make sure you kind of get independent in that asset of your life. Well um, said, Gage. Thank you. Thank you very much, Max. It means a lot, brother. Let us know here if you have any questions about that. Because I know some kids, they don't, they're too uncomfortable. If you, if you need help with figuring out how to speak to your coaches, let us know. Like right here in the comments, let us know. We'd love to get more into detail about that. Because it is difficult. Like it's a, it's a skill you have to have. It's being able, especially to an adult who has authority, like being able to go articulate yourself and be able to speak your mind um, and get across what you want to go. It's a, it's difficult. I just, especially for younger kids, kids who are 13, 14 years old, but the parents who try to protect them and try to speak on their behalf aren't helping the kid in the long run. Like you see those effects, you see the negative effects from it down the road, even more so. Right. Right. So. Well, this has been a new segment called keeping it real. We hope you enjoy it again. Leave the comments about anything you want to, anything you need help with. Um, this is a team week. Let's get a team on here. First, we're going to start with Jalen Reyes of Nebraska Volleyball. Then we're Go Big get, Red. Yee -yee. Then we're going to get there are some of the other Nebraska players on. But first, like I said, Jalen Reyes. All right, we're joined here by a local boy, Jalen Reyes, ex-BYU men's volleyball player, then turned coach, now a Nebraska assistant coach. Jalen, how are we doing, man? Good, boys. How are you guys? Doing good. Just want to doing throw good. one one fat house at you. So just, <laughs> just throwing that. So – so as we mentioned before, actually, let's get into that. As we mentioned before, your local boy, what, what's the balance between looseness and tightness in a perfect shaka? You know, because we've had, we've had some local boys like literally like, like this. And then we've had some guys like, oh, it's too loose, too tight. So what in your mind is the perfect shaka? Yeah, the ideal shaka, what does it look like? Uh, I think if I were to go percentage, I think it's like 70% loose. 30% tightness and just, yeah. you know, and shake it, you got to right? make sure you know that the thumb and pinky are out, but it's okay if these other fingers kind of mess around a little bit. So yep, exactly. the, the, the thing is that when you get the looser you get and, and when you go in the mainland, like they don't understand, like, you know what I'm saying? Like the looser you get, they're like, what People is like that? This. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like all the time. Aloha. Yeah. Yeah. I you just can't, can't go hundred percent tightness just screams tourists to me. You know? Yeah. That's a Holly shaka. <laughs> Speaking of locals, you guys are bringing in a local girl, Akana, yeah, this year? Yeah, Keone Lay is coming up. Uh, she just graduated yesterday, and uh, yeah, she decided when the coaching change happened at USC to kind of change course there, and um, I know her high school coach really well, so he kind of just reached out when that all went down and kind of got her to come out to, uh, to Lincoln. That's sweet. Cool. How, much That's awesome. how much convincing did you have to do to get a local girl out there, or were they pretty sold? <laughs> Uh, a little bit, a, a little bit for sure. I think there was a little bit of uh, familiarity with me and the family. So that kind of helped, but, um, especially she didn't, she never visited. She's never even been in Nebraska yet. So he's in for uh, a surprise going yeah, from Hawaii to Nebraska. <laughs> yeah. She's going to report, I guess on Monday or Tuesday of next week. So that would be the wow. first time she's ever been in Nebraska. So, wow. um, Wait. it's going to be a very interesting time. Culture so shock. So we saw that the NCAA kind of released a bunch of uh, of sports that are laughing allowed right now. Like, uh, was it summer training? Is, is all the sports now? Oh, really? So you guys are getting. You guys are starting in like two weeks here. Uh, our girls will come back. Um, they're they're allowing some sports teams to come back. We're one of them. Um, they're gonna have to quarantine for a little bit. They're all gonna get tested, and then 
they'll start like, you know, like the voluntary summer workouts and they'll start summer school, but it's, it's, it's very like limited people on campus. Like even I'm not on campus, even I will probably won't be allowed back on campus until probably July. So are they going to have, are they, they going to have those classes online? Or are they going to be in person? Class will be online. Um, training, training will be in the weight room right now. And I think the protocol is only, we have about 15 girls on the team. So I think when they go in there for their workouts, I think only seven or eight of them, they'll like lift in two sections just so there's not too many people. Gotcha. Away from that one. Have you spoken to other coaches? Is that, is that kind of transition going to be similar across the country? Is that mostly just at Nebraska, how that's going to look? Um, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of schools will do it this way. Nebraska, we're, we're kind of lucky. Nebraska hasn't gotten hit as hard with the coronavirus as some other states. So like, for an example, like California, I doubt they're maybe going back already. Um, but I think for the most part, I think schools that are opening up are kind of doing it. I'm not going to say similar, but like exact same, but maybe similar to what we're doing right now. I'm not really sure because our protocol, I just found out about it two days ago. So I think, I think, and I, it could change, like I could get off on another call this afternoon. It could have changed slightly just because no one kind of knows what's going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's just so much uncertainty. So, so I, one more question. So I know that we, uh, Hawaii, like, obviously girls, girls programs are more vast than men's programs. And there's way more high level, um, high budget programs uh, when it comes to women's volleyball. And we've noticed that, okay, there's a lot of schools that we had in our schedule. Where we were attending on having on our schedule that either can't afford to come out now or, or something along those lines has happened because of the coronavirus. Have you guys, like you said, in California, stuff really isn't opening up. Have you guys noticed like possible change in your schedule or is it pretty much the same or is it kind of day by day? No, For sure. I, I think a lot of it is day by day, um, but we've already made some edits to our schedule based on um, some costs, trying to save some costs. So we were going to go down to Texas and play. We we're going to actually come out to California and play and we're going to stick closer to home. We don't even know exactly what, what that's going to look like. The big 10 might just, have its own we might just play a big 10 schedule so to be honest boys all of that is still up in the air but I think our um our head coach John John Cook has done a pretty good job of having um these like contingency plans just in case this happens or you know if this happens and we're ready for this if this happens we're ready for this if this happens he kind of has like in terms of scheduling he has three main plans laid out one of them is just playing all big 10 matches um one of them has to do with maybe playing some uh, schools closer to us, like Creighton or University of Nebraska, Omaha or Wichita State, schools that are in driving distance. And then, um, and then the other plan would be kind of keep our regular schedule as planned, but edit. We've already made some edits to it. So um, we're just hoping, we're hoping for some sort of season. It sounds like we'll have some sort of season, but um, we don't really know exactly what our schedule will be yet. Gotcha. It, so from you, from a coaching perspective, you, you have had the opportunity to coach at two of the most dominant programs in the U S both on the men's and women's side. So for you, let's start at BYU that first transition. Cause you were hired like days after you finished your playing career. What was that transition like for you? What was the biggest thing you had to adapt uh, to in becoming a coach? Um, I think the biggest thing was being one of the boys and then three or four months later can't be one of the boys anymore. Yeah. My name is Rod, and I like to party. Yeah. I think that was the hardest part. I didn't. Uh, I only had two other guys graduate with me, so the following season it was um, it was basically the same team. I think Ben Patch came back off his mission, um, and then we added one freshman. And then other than that, it was pretty much the same 18, 19 guys on the roster. So that was not hard but that was just kind of a transition you know in the fall usually on the weekend you go and hang out with the guys you go to football games with the boys and what are saturdays for the boys saturdays are for the boys it's yeah. you know you just hang out and do whatever and that was a little bit of a transition for me just because i'm very social so it kind of kind of was a little a little lonely two or three you see the boys the you know, i gotta go with the coaches <laughs> until, until recruiting started i could travel and go and hang out with other people it was it was a little lonely for a little bit. So I would say that was probably the toughest transition to start. <laughs> Texting your head coach, hey, man, you want to kick it back or something? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sean, Sean and Luca were married, too, so they had their own kids. So I'm like, crap, you know? So from a – there's one story I have from playing you as a coach that I have that sticks out with me. 
is when you came out my junior year and you guys spanked us. That was that was one of our worst matches of the year um, <laughs> on our home floor. And I remember that you you're on the side. It was the second or third set. And you you have a tendency to get off the bench a lot and come to the side of the court. <laughs> That's something we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into that when the girls hop on here. But uh, so you you came up and I was front row and it was in the second, oh, maybe it was in the fourth set. Uh, I remember we were on the set the away side that we usually don't start on, and you came running up and I was standing next to Dalton Solberg on middle and you're like this guy's literally insane. He will do anything. <laughs> yeah, he's the blockers. And uh, my middle like, looks at me and he's like, what is he talking about? And I'm like. I don't know what he's like. This guy's <laughs> insane. I'm out there, Jerry, and I'm loving every minute of it. You'll do I think, anything. I, I think we were just talking about like you'll throw it in from wherever. If someone gets <laughs> stuffed, you won't you won't uh, hesitate to set him again. You know, our guys are just typical. Okay, we block somebody or we stop somebody, the setter will go away from him. Like, no, Joe will still set him no matter keep what. Pumping I don't exactly him. remember exactly. Yeah, he's yeah, just yeah. pointing at me like this guy is crazy. He's making me sound like <laughs> psycho. <laughs> I remember that. That's the only thing that sticks out. But and so after your time at BYU, uh, obviously you went over to Nebraska um, to again one of the top programs in the country on the women's side. Uh, what is the big? Because we get this question a lot. Actually, people ask like, why is there more uh, support on the women's side? What is what is the bi biggest difference for you from a coaching perspective, and then also from a fan perspective from the men's and women's game that makes it so attractive? Um, I think on the, on the women's side, I think it's just bigger around the country, you know? So like, I remember, um, when I was coaching guys, it's like, you know, you're, you're playing, you're playing in tournaments or you're going, you're going to recruiting tournaments. Um, and it's besides nationals, like all the teams are from very similar areas, right? So everyone's kind of in men's volleyball, everyone's from Hawaii, California. You have a little pocket of Arizona. Obviously, the Chicago area is big. Um, you got, like, the Florida. And then I know, like, the, the East Coast, like, uh, upstate New York, the Washington, D.C. area is big. In women's volleyball, guys, it's all over. So, like, I, could, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying, like, just Omaha and Lincoln are as big as, like, Southern California for volleyball, but it's everybody follows volleyball. But then you go into, like, random states like Oklahoma, and they have all these – that massive clubs and you go down Texas is crazy you know Texas is if you add all of boys volleyball together around the country it doesn't even touch like Dallas and Houston put together to be honest and just in terms of the amount of money that's spent in club volleyball and the amount of girls playing it's just I think it's just one there's just sheer sheer number of girls playing the that volume school, yeah um is the biggest I think is the biggest difference and then of course we can talk about all the title nine stuff right that allows you know, there's just more, there's more opportunities for women um, in like college. So you could argue, okay, that trickles down. So the fact that there's more college scholarships adds into there's more girls playing, but it's just bigger around the country. You know, I, I still remember going through states and um, telling people, you know, in states like Oklahoma or South Dakota, or I don't know, even Tennessee to, to a degree and talking to people and saying that I played college volleyball. You know, and they kind of look at me like funny, like, isn't that a girl sport? You know, we still, yeah. well, you'll still get that in some areas of the country. Um, Nebraska is pretty, um, pretty familiar. And then obviously all the states that have men's volleyball teams are familiar, but you'll still get that rep of like, isn't that a girl sport a little bit? Yeah. So yeah, I just think there's just, there's just more girls playing at a younger age, which drives the attention span to, you know, go into the men's, like the women's final four versus the men's final four. The women's final four is a huge, huge event. It's yeah. not even just the matches. It's, there's a convention run around it from like Tuesday night through Saturday night. You know, it's this yeah. crazy um, circus if I were to compare the two. And I, I think there, it's just because there's just more people in it from a younger age. Yeah. And so you, you, you being the recruiting coordinator uh, as titled on your guys' website, um, the, <laughs> uh, <laughs> for you uh what does that when you're going out and recruiting a nebraska athlete what is it that you're looking for and what is it that separates this girl from that girl like what it, what exactly are you guys looking for at nebraska you, uh i mean it's 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 honestly very similar to boys you know you're looking for people that obviously can play volleyball they can jump high hit hard if they're big 
at a younger age. The difference in guys versus girls is we recruit a lot younger, you know. So, um, you know, I'm typically watching 14, 15 year olds, 16 year olds. By the time they get to like 17, 18, they're usually committed. We're usually just watching them to follow them, not really recruit them anymore. If that makes sense. That's um, just wild to me. How early? Yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah. It's it's definitely different. So you're you're looking at you know how big their feet are. You're looking at how big mom and dad are. Obviously, you're watching them play volleyball. If they can hit the ball hard, if they have a good arm swing, I think is a big thing. Big arm swing is a big thing to change. Um, you know, in setters, how they move around the court. Uh, I typically like you know setters that are a little bit longer. You know, if they have big feet, big hands, so you hope that they can kind of fill out. Especially if you're. Well, I couldn't be recruited in Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, Joe. Once I, once I see you play volleyball, Joe, I think I would have taken you. But. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's it. And for me, just watching people play volleyball. I even watch kids that are committed at a young age that are committed to other schools um, that I just like watching them play volleyball. There's, there's a girl that's from, I'm um, not allowed to mention her name, but there's a girl from, um, she's committed in Minnesota and she's from the Wisconsin area. And I really, honestly, and I even tell Hugh McCutcheon this all the time, like I just genuinely like watching her play just to, like, I like watching her play volleyball. And obviously she's a really good volleyball player, but you know, she knows how to pass, set, hit, hit out of the back row. She can serve, you know, she can block, she can hit high balls. She can hit that fast go set you guys used to set at Hawaii. You know, she can get, get on the ball, you know. So it's, uh, I don't know, I think, I, I think recruiting young is, is, is kind of a crapshoot a little bit. But it's cool because it makes you like, okay, hey, what do they have now? And then when you see them in six months, do they, have they added anything to it? Have they grown? Do they hit the ball harder or have they, you know, kind of regressed a little bit? So it's a little bit more of a crapshoot, but it kind of makes the recruiting game a little bit more fun, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, Jalen, before we uh, add the girls on, I have one more question for you. One Go more ahead. question. Something I've been wondering for a very long time. <laughs> oh, no. I, now, I don't remember – I don't know if you – if this carried on to Nebraska, but how come BYU – has the biggest clipboards I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. And where do you purchase Like this those? big. No, it's bigger than that. It's literally like this big. That's huge. Yeah. I, looked at them, I was like, oh, my God. They're writing like I, five plays up at once. I, so, I've, I, to be honest, Gage, I've never used a big clipboard. I know Devin uses it now, and then Luca used it back then. I think they just got them on, like, some random online, like, website. But I, they're huge. Like, Holding them is like, you remember when Oregon or like Texas Tech for football, football teams, they have the pictures on the sidelines. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, that's like how big those boards are. So they are, they are pretty big, but um, I'm not really sure. I'm sure you can get them online somewhere. You probably just Google like the biggest clipboard ever and you, they'll probably pop That's up. where BYU shows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's, uh, let's get the girls on here. Let's ask them a few questions and, and try and, and embarrass Jalen here. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, we're joined here by Nicklin, Madison, and Lexi. First off, how's it? How are we doing? You guys staying safe? What's up? It's going good. <laughs> Living life. <laughs> Don't do my mans like that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're all right. <laughs> so first things first, how is, uh, what's life looking for you guys? Like, like what's workouts and everything doing? What have you guys been up to? Well, I feel like Lexi's situation is a little different than ours. What is, Lexi, what's your situation? Um, I'm in California, obviously home. Um, my sister has a gym in her garage, so I've been doing that, and it's been a really great situation. Um, yeah, but we're going, I'm going back to Lincoln June 1st, so. And I think we're going to try to start workouts June 8th. Like a lifting gym or like a volleyball gym? Like a lifting gym. Oh, okay, okay. Dang, yeah, so no nice. volleyball. So, so Jalen, you're supposed to, so I'm guessing these girls all have workout regimens that they're supposed to be following. Is, is am, I, am I correct with that statement? Uh, they have workout regimens that we can send them <laughs> that they can optionally do if they want to or not. Promise me that you're not going to do anything. I got you. It's better if nobody trade. You don't know anything. Now, we, can't re we can't require them to do it. We basically, we can require them to do like virtual stuff. So like we could have a group meeting, like a Zoom meeting or a Zoom call. We have eight hours to do anything like virtual right now, but we can't require them to do anything like physical, if that makes sense. So you guys going to do like 
four two-hour film sessions a week. We, we, I mean, if we <laughs> wanted to, we could do that. I think they would all kill us, though. And I think they would rebel after the first hour. But Yeah, um, yeah no, we would show up anymore. We wouldn't show up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. so, so this is kind of a chance to throw some of your teammates under the bus, kind of tease them. So I'm going to throw this at all of you guys. Right so... Now that you're supposed to, you're supposed to probably, like you said, you guys are supposed to report in about two weeks or, or a week for you, Lexi. Who, who on the team would you say is says they're working out but really isn't working out? Like, there's got to be someone. And, and there's definitely someone. Don't, yeah. don't try it. Be person. I don't say on my team. Yeah, we could say on our teams who would that be. We are so committed. Just everyone is, everyone is dialed in. Jalen, is... uh, actually, actually, we won't say Jalen. We don't want to. We don't want to. We'll start with <laughs> Maddie, Nicola. Who do you think? Who do you think of the team is definitely eh, not as working out as much as, the, as they say they are. I'm trying to think. <laughs> Let's start with about... <laughs> You guys are too worried about the consequences of what's going to happen. Yeah. Just say it. Just speak your mind on this. Coach is definitely going to watch this and then text yeah, exactly. us all. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Okay, okay. We'll move okay. past that question, but if you know, if you wanna, uh, we can release it at a later date if you guys want to like, tell us who it is. Put it on screen or someone. For, so for you guys, in, in general, we were talking about this before when we were writing up what we wanted to talk with you guys about. In college volleyball at Hawaii, we had a lot of people transferring uh, and we had a lot of people coming in and out of the program. What is it? You can, I, we only get the coaches and players perspective. Cause I've had roommates and stuff that I told like probably was better uh, or for playing time that they transfer. Why do people leave programs like Nebraska? And why is there so much change? Like I know, like I've had friends that I told like the best, the best thing to do is cha uh, transfer. But for you guys, why do you think that happens so much in on the women's side? I feel like more so than anything, it happens on the women's side more so. For me, I would just say because the recruiting process happened so early. Like, I was going on visits when I was in, like, eighth grade. Like, it's so dumb. Um, and I had, like, no idea what I wanted. So, I would say just the recruiting process. And then also, I feel like at Nebraska, it's just a, such a competitive, like, program. So, I feel like everyone wants to play. And I feel like that is why a lot of people transfer. Yeah, that. Jayla, what do you – what 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 is your perspective on that? Like, why do you see so many transfers? Or more? Do you think it's more so on the women's side than the men's side? Um, I agree with what Lex says for sure. I think that's a big issue is the fact that it, we are looking at. I told you guys before they got on, right? I'm watching 13, 14 year old yeah. girls. I know now now some rules don't allow <laughs> um, us to recruit them essentially or have them visit, which is I think a good thing. Um. I would say the other reason, and I agree with playing time, that's, that's definitely, I think those are the two biggest reasons what Lexi hit there. I think maybe another reason that it happens more on the, guy, on the girls' side than the men's side, boys, is the fact that um, in men's volleyball, right, there's only four and a half scholarships per team, and there's, like, what, 30 teams, 35 yeah. teams? Yeah. So it, it, on the women's side, realistically, if a girl transfers from Nebraska – she's going to get full rides for her last two or three years. Um, and most of the school she's going to go to. So it's even a money thing, right? Where, you know, let's just say I'm from Hawaii, right? And I, let's just say if I was one of your teammates at Hawaii and I wanted to transfer because I got stuck behind your brother, I couldn't play in front of Gage. And um, it would be really expensive for me to just like, oh, I'm going to transfer to UCLA, you know, because Gage, you probably know this. There's not a lot of money for liberos in men's <laughs> yeah. volleyball versus on the women's side, there's a lot of full rides and a lot of schools that have full rides. And when girls transfer from Nebraska, I can tell you from experience, a lot of coaches will call us that are very interested in one of the girls leaving our team. Um, so, but I don't know. Let's see if Nick and Maddie have any other uh, inquiries and in why people transfer. I think they hit it all. Yeah. I don't have any other. Okay. So I don't so know, Nick, you, Nick, Nick, your dad's a club coach. So what, what, like from the club side, what, I mean, I'm sure your dad has dealt with some, obviously you're not transferring, but some other kids from his club that are wanting to transfer. Yeah. Um, sometimes people just, yeah, like Lexi said, make the decision too early and then they get there and it's not really all that they wanted or they don't gel well with the team or with the coach. And that's, I think would be the main issue, just not gelling with the coach and they end up transferring. 
Also, I think we talk about it a lot, how recruiting is so different than when you actually are at the school, actually with the team and the coach. Because it's kind of, you get on campus and you're just wowed by all this stuff. And then when you're actually there in it, it's so different. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so for this next question, don't worry. We do, did our due diligence with this next question. <laughs> you were allowed to answer this. So as a fellow NCAA athlete, you know, the, the 2021 rule came out saying you could propose, propose I guess you say. Uh, I think, you know, I think it's, it's, it's in effect. Yeah, it's going to be in no, fact, 2021. Not, not till- in 2021, January, right? January 2021. Yeah. January 2021. Uh, 2021. So I was thinking, I was like, okay, if I could get sponsored by anybody, <laughs> who would I want to get sponsored by? And I'll answer it myself before I throw it on to you guys. Now, in Nebraska and Hawaii, I feel like you guys can, uh, um, you guys can, uh, uh, I guess, profit off this most, right? Small schools are not going to be able to, you know, you guys might show up in commercials. Like one of our ex uh, players, he showed up in like a sewer commercial or whatever. I don't even know. <laughs> Rosie? Was it Rosie? It was Rosie. Yeah, it was Rosie. Yeah. So if I, I'm going to ask you guys, I want you guys to answer afterwards, but, or you can say a type if you want to say clothing or something. But if I wanted to get, uh, not sponsored, but uh, yeah, I guess sponsored or something like that. <laughs> show up on a TV commercial. Uh, I guess mine, if I were to get, choose one would be maybe like Taco Bell or something. Like limited <laughs> tacos or something. <laughs> <laughs> what you're like a taco bell brand like flashing in the camera <laughs> so who would you guys want it could be in nebraska it can be anyone who would you guys want i would be lululemon for sure for sure Lexi. i knew i knew she was gonna say <laughs> i would say like starbucks or something like that like i drink so much starbucks do you think i'd get it for free if i was like a sport that's what like, like, you know, like fun can city i feel like because of my last name <laughs> Or there. What, Coach would what love did you that. say, Lex? Coach would Suntan love that. City. Suntan City. <laughs> he always says our coaches, our team is sponsored by that. What would your guys' catchphrase be for your <laughs> for the camp? <laughs> Drink more Starbucks. Yeah. What about, <laughs> J- Jalen, what about you? Who would you it's want? About it? Oh my gosh, I have no idea. Uh, the world at your fingertips, you know. Local motion. Local motion. <laughs> hey, when I, I was know. a kid. When I was a kid, when my dad was coaching UH, that's that's where they were sponsored. And honestly, if I'm by the coast, a surf brand would be awesome. Free boogie boards, free surfboards, yeah, stuff like sick. that. Sick. So Local I don't Martin really know, Jersey. but so so, uh, including Jalen, we've all been kind of uh, uh, we've all been in, included in, uh, or I guess we've all been part of big programs with a big fan base, right? And we've been we've we've dealt with some interesting fans. I guess you could say some fans that kind of crossed the line. And we asked this question. We asked this question with our last guest, uh, the Beach Volley Vikings. And like, w- were there any weird kind of I guess DMs that you received that you could that you were comfortable to yeah, say? Yeah, that are appropriate. To say. Like we had one. Guy, we, had, we had one guy uh, saying, "Look, the Beach Volley Vikings are are a beach volleyball." And they're like, "There's one girl who wanted to just." sit in between them and just like, cuddle <laughs> in between them so is there any again within reason like, you can share anything you want we're, we're all about it whatever you want to share you can share so we'll start with either one of you guys well this, I think this question is for you three <laughs> this was a dm but um lauren posted for my birthday what was it oh yeah. um uh, it was like pictures January. from like when you guys went to the Ohio yeah. State game, like when we went to like, the football games. And someone commented and was like, "Maybe you guys shouldn't be doing fun things. You should be in the gym after the dumpster <laughs> fire of a season you had last <laughs> oh year. Oh my gosh, Maybe the you should go work fire. on your connection instead of going out uh, and doing fun things." Dude, oh we my. got we got roasted. Actually, Jalen, we got roasted after the first BYU night. We just got absolutely stomped, and like we got so we 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 talked about this with Rado earlier on the show, and we were talking about how you know we got a lot of support, and then after we got destroyed, we're like, oh, the old, the fans showed up, but the team didn't. Yeah. You guys sucked. Or, <laughs> all <laughs> Americans are trash. Great. It's not funny. Get out if you're gonna continue to laugh and make fun of me. I'm tired of it. Said the word disgrace after that. Oh man. Dang. Oh my God. What about you, Maddie? I was thinking the I just posted a picture from when we were in Florida and someone had commented, I hope you're still practicing volleyball. I don't know. There's a lot of interesting <laughs> like Lexi would probably have a lot. Yeah. People yeah, love mean, you. Dude, once you get on a pedestal, they're just you get some you get some characters. I'll just say that. I mean I'm not I don't consider myself on a pedestal at all, but I guess uh Hawaii allows for that though. For sure. And so, uh, kind of tying it back to the NCAA, 
in I know some I know for sure what I would say, but in in terms of the rules of the NCAA, what is something? We'll start with you, Jalen. What is something you would like to see get changed uh, to benefit either athletes more or programs more? What is something or looser restrictions on? Man, I don't know. Uh, I think the likeness thing is 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 a good thing. I think. Um, you know, if, if a pianist can go to college and still make money on the side playing a piano, I don't see why not. Um, you know, I don't see why, like, you know, these three, if they, if they so choose and someone wants to give them a lot of money to do something that doesn't hinder them being good in school or good in volleyball and obviously, you know, affect their personal lives, I don't see why they shouldn't reap the benefits of doing that, you know? So I think that's, a good thing I think I don't know I I don't know about this like pay them to play direct model just because I think it's going to kill a lot of smaller sports um and I think it's really just going to benefit football and basketball um so I think like sports the Olympic sports model is going to kind of kind of take a hit for that but I don't really know I think I think to be honest I'm a fan of just letting the kids transfer directly I know some our sports not too too affected by it because most of the time girls are allowed to play right away but you know if I'm I'm as a coach if I'm allowed to leave next year and go and coach wherever I want and not have yeah. to sit out a year why do why do the players to me to be honest I think um, it's I think it's ridiculous sometimes they you see NCAA they limit how many meals they can feed you and stuff like that. I'm like who the hell cares about that <laughs> <laughs> no soup for you how many times yeah. kids are eating? No lunch today. It's against the rules. <laughs> um, yeah. Maddie and Nick, you guys are together. What is something that you guys would like to see changed? I I thought of the challenge rule. You know how it's like you lift the <laughs> challenge if you don't get it right or if you do get it right? I think that should be changed yeah. because we've won way too many challenges with bad refs to lose them. Okay. Okay. I feel like but a lot of it has to do with camera systems too, though. You know? Yeah, if they're gonna do the challenges, they have to have good cameras. Like, there's no point in having it making a challenge and like them get it wrong. Like, it makes absolutely no sense. I've been in some. I've been in some interesting gyms where they had the challenge rule, where the it wasn't like the the camera. They had one camera, like the top left corner, and you so can't dumb. see anything. It was like pixelated, <laughs> and they're like, "Yeah, we're challenging for a touch here." I'm like, yeah. "What are you looking like, <laughs> yeah. at?" Yeah. There was our co sure. there was a coach in our league this year in the German league, and we had like the Hawkeye, like really nice uh, challenge system. Um, it was, I think it was a Champions League match, and he hit the wrong button on what he wanted to challenge, and so they showed the wrong challenge, and he throws the clipboard. <laughs> he's like the, the board. Oh, it was the challenge system needs to be fixed. Like you just should be able to tell him what you want. The whole like the whole button system. I don't think that's very efficient. But Lexi, you're gonna give the guy the one yeah. camera in the corner, yeah. and then they look at it for like 20 minutes. It's like there's no way you're gonna see that. <laughs> I think that's for show though. They gotta, they gotta like see. They got to and with the nets, like the down ref is the one who missed it, and then they're the one who's reviewing it. Like I don't think a lot of the times they want to be like, "Oh, I was wrong." That's and true. also for our games, like they always put on headphones for it. Like what <laughs> audio is going to impact the call? Does this <laughs> ball make a different sound if it's in or out? It's going to do the same thing. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, at Nebraska games, all they're going to hear is Jalen yelling the entire time. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> jewel, jewel, highlight. <laughs> Lexi, is there one more, well, is there anything for you that you would want to change or just kind of? Um, I would agree with Jalen. I think like the transferring thing. Oh my god, that's big. Like, but I think they already changed it. Like you're allowed to transfer once. I don't know. Um, and then also they already changed the rule about like recruiting early and stuff. I think. So now yeah. it's like later, which they should. Less stress, yeah, for sure. It's nice having kind of. I mean. Like, guys, like, we're not allowed to get talked to. Well, they change it now to, like, sophomore year of high school. I mean, you guys, as Jalen said, like, like, 13 and 14 making, like, life decisions at, like, 15 years of age when you've never been in the college. It's, like, hard. Like, so it's definitely nice that they kind of that they push it uh, push it back. And, and coaches, you really don't have a choice because, I mean, what? If you don't talk to the girl, then someone else will, and someone will kind of pressure them into kind of committing yeah. or something. So it's, like, a tough situation. I, I feel that. So, uh, Lexi, so you are now graduated, right? Am I right? Not yet. Oh wait, are you on? Oh, yeah, I have one more. You came in my I'm graduating okay. in okay. one semester. Okay, so if, I guess this can go to all you guys. Um, I know Maddie, you're going into your sophomore year, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so eventually, I'm guessing the national team and, and professional uh, uh, is definitely in your kind of sights. Um, or am I wrong with that? Is that something you want to pursue, or is there something other uh, professional career that you want to pursue? This goes for all of you guys. We'll start with uh, Lexi and then and then Maddie and Nicklin. 
That's a great question. I have no idea. Um, I'll either, yeah, try to play pro or like move back home, but I have no idea. But yeah, I mean, you got time. In a few months. Nicola and Maddie? Um, yeah, I don't really know either. Like, I think I want to play for as long as possible, but I also want to coach. So I don't know what I'll end up doing. Yeah. I for sure want to play. I don't want to have a job ever. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I like to hear right there. So, so it sounds like for, for Nicklin and, and, and uh, Alexi here, it's basically play until you feel, until you feel like, okay, like I'm done with this or until you get hurt. Well, hopefully not, but geez, why would you say that? I don't know why I said that. I'm just going to do it. Knock on wood. Um, where, for Maddie, where would you want to, do you have any idea of country you would want to play in? Um, I really liked Japan when we went this summer. I thought that was super cool. That would be um, a heck of a place to play. <laughs> Great yeah. choice. Yeah. Big time. Yeah, yeah. Big I don't know. <laughs> Wait, what was the – so we went to Japan last – actually, <laughs> we were planning on going, but we – basically, we were planning on going this upcoming season to Japan again because we went Joe's senior year of fall. What was it – in? I guess you guys all went, right? So what was the biggest kind of culture shock for you or the coolest thing that you kind of noticed? Because we went to Tokyo. <laughs> Did you guys? Did you guys go to Tokyo or no? No. no. Okay, so we had different experiences, but we'll, maybe we can uh, relate to some. What were the biggest kind of culture shocks in Japan? Or the yeah, coolest girls. things? <laughs> um, I would just say the food for me. I'm not like, not really exotic in my foods. Right. <laughs> I feel like that was a little bit different for me, but it was beautiful. Japan was like super clean and nice and. They have no trash cans. Somehow it's so it's so clean, but they have no trash cans. <laughs> right. And it's like I don't know. and it, it's it's disrespectful to kind of take food on the go or or it's just frowned upon, I guess, in that community. And I I mean that's how we live. So it was definitely yeah. very, very interesting. Sure. From a volleyball standpoint, did you guys <laughs> so we showed up, none of them had Libero jerseys. So we, on the first day. So we show up and they're all the same jerseys and they're running these combinations all over. We don't know <laughs> who the Libero is, we don't know who's back row. <laughs> Did you guys have similar experiences, or was it pretty, like, the style of uh, play in Japan, was it pretty easy to play against for you guys? I thought it was really fast. Like, everything, the passes were just, like, shoving to the net, shoving whatever, like, that's what it seemed like. Yeah, yeah the, the, just the Asian style of volleyball play is so cool. Like, I would love to play. Obviously, that's not very possible in how the professional scene works, but, uh, yeah, the Asian style is super cool. So we'll kind of wrap it up here soon, but we, we wanted to leave off with something uh, funny, hopefully, for the viewers. We want to get your opinion on stuff that, or if you guys have any stories, that'd be great. Stuff that, from your coaches that have annoyed you over the past year. Something they do in practice. Uh, or imitations. Or imitations. Imitations would be great, too. Those are always good. Always what, good what's something that, it doesn't have to be Jalen, but in general, that Literally really annoys like so you about your coach? In a fun way. <laughs> don't, don't Where do I begin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's like you can take an hour doing this. Number one thing. And then, and, then we'll it. Gosh. and then Jalen, we can reverse it. And then you can, and then you can talk about these I'm things. not doing that. He's got to be some funny story or some imitation that you guys do or something that they repeatedly do that you guys Okay, do. I have one. Every single day before a game or practice, Jalen and I walk up to each other and shake hands and say, thanks for coming today, Jalen. Thanks for, thanks for coming today, Madison. I always thank her for oh. showing up today, and she always, thanks for coming to work today, Jalen. I always call her Madison. <laughs> Madison? <laughs> That's friendly, though. Mm. <laughs> I, can dig I have a lot. <laughs> yeah, here's just one that's just, I don't know. Um, coach thinks my name is Alexa, and it's like, Ale like my full name is Alexis, but no one calls me that, but he just seems to consistently love to call me Alexa, like the Alexa, like probably that he has at his house. So every time he's like, Alexa, Alexa, and I don't even respond, but he still calls me it. And it's so <laughs> You're just like giving you orders through Alexa. Just like he literally like, doesn't even know my name. I'm like, okay. He's like, put butter on my shopping list, Alexa. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what about Micklin? You got a bunch. I feel like you're restrained from saying them. Don't be afraid. Do you guys have like positional coaches? Is it like the setters work with this coach or is it just kind of free for all? Kind of, yeah, we kind of there has to be like one coach that you work with that. Yeah, we different. work with coach mainly. And then I was just thinking of like stories because when we combined Jalen coaches and middles, we combined like middles and setters, <laughs> and it's all of us, and you're coaching us. I don't know. 
Good times. There's just nothing- everyone always gives you so no- much attitude. Go ahead, Nick. Dig in. I don't care. There has to be something the Jalen does. There's other different As dogs she From playing to say. against him, I know what annoys me. Yeah. It annoys Milan the most. I gotta get Jalen. I gotta tell you that. I would just say, like, annoying in general. I just, like, don't listen to him. <laughs> when I come- Damn! Ruthless. Like ignore it. Oh my God. <laughs> I feel like you know that, Jalen. In game, it's not like yeah. In game, really? what? Do you, so Jalen is very active, and like when we were playing against him, because he coached at BYU my junior year, like it would annoy us so much that he was like running up to the net, pointing across, and like, <laughs> our our coaches would be talking crap in the <laughs> timeouts, like calling him out. Like we we have a Serbian coach, and he hates when Jalen would do that, and so <laughs> as for, when you play with them, do you guys like, is that not bother you or do you guys just like not even care about it? The one thing that bothers me is we'll be at the net, like getting ready to serve and you like come up and you're like telling us what the other team's going to do. And the other team can hear you because like, I don't think you have a voice. Like, a voice. <laughs> so he's scored on the wrong side, side. of his face. <laughs> <laughs> like the girl looked me across the net and she's like, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Now you know what we're taking on you, so. <laughs> so that's the funniest. He'll bring his clipboard up and he's like, the team's on this side. He's like, okay guys, this is what we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite though is when you get super hype. Like, I love watching back videos, and you're, like, running down the sideline, like, fist pumping. And yeah, I like so that. Sick. I love that for a coach. Coach That's is so literally sick. like this. Yeah. <laughs> He's so <laughs> mad. Yeah. Our coach, our coach is the same thing. So, he tries to say, because it's kind of funny, because Jalen, Jalen wears his heart on his sleeve, sleeve, which I respect. But our coach, he does a fist pump, but he just tries to stay calm, cool, and collected in a stressful environment. So, he's always just, like, you can tell. <laughs> Ready to burst. It's, it's pretty funny watching the replays. Well, uh, Jalen, Nicola, Maddie, Lexi, thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully, we didn't get you in too much trouble. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Keep us updated. Again, thank you so much for being on the show, and I wish you guys nothing but the best. And, and good luck in two weeks when you guys resume, and I hope everything, uh, I hope everything goes according to plan. Thank you, guys. Thanks, boys. Thank you. Thank you. That kind of got brutal kind of quick there. Yeah, that, I did not expect it with that. I did not expect him to just start roasting <laughs> Jalen. That was not God. our intention. I'm going Jay Ray. Jay Ray's a, good, a great coach. I, I was like, I was like, <laughs> it's was all like, good. It's just a joke, though, you know. It's a joke, <laughs> I'm sure. Jay Ray's the man. Jay Ray is the man, dude. When Jay Ray was coach, uh, because because he was recruiting me at BYU, and uh, <laughs> certain circumstances led to me, and that was my junior year of high school. Certain circumstances, which I cannot discuss. Uh, right now have led to me only uh, having a flip phone for my entire <laughs> junior year. Oh, we got to get into that story sometime <laughs> soon. Uh. That is a story for another time. After the, after the case is finished up, his lawyer won't let him speak on it. We that. should have some people put in the comments. Why do you think Gage got grounded? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay, yeah, we want to see. We wanna Why see. do you think Gage had to have a flip phone in junior, his junior year of high school? Let's hear it. <laughs> but, but I remember he was like, I got to like, Couple of college coaches contacted me, and I had to like respond via flip phone. I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like, I was like, I had to whip out my flip phone. Like, yeah, coach. And like, unrecruiting <laughs> visits, I'd be like, "Let me just get this contact in here." And I'd go, and pull out the old Nokia for you, <laughs> coach. Shoot, I literally I would show up to my recruiting visit, and uh, people, the the, the players would be like, "You're lying. That's not your phone." I'm like, "That's that's my phone." <laughs> like, so that's my first introduction. Let me get a picture on your Hawaii visit. I gotta get a picture of Mox. Oh, my dog is going nuts right now. <laughs> With the flip phone. Dude, Roxy, not- <laughs> shut the hell up. Come here. Kai, come here. Kai, come here. Come here. Come here. Let's get Kai out of here. Come here. Look at her. Come here. Come here, Kai. Come here. Go, go. He's just trying to protect me. <laughs> He's just mad. Right, Roxy? <laughs> get, huh? on, get Roxy out. Come here. <laughs> come here. Wasn't, wasn't Roxy, like, prying the window open? <laughs> look at them doggies. Yeah, <laughs> she's a cutie. Oh, she's cute. Well, all right, guys. All right, this has been this has been super fun. We we'll get the dogs on here. We've had great fun here. I hope you guys enjoy the same. Again, comment below. Why do you think I had a flip phone? Maybe someday I'll tell you why. Um, to be determined, guys. This has been awesome. This has been another episode of Out of Out of Sis. Um.
hey guys, just chilling in my bed as I usually do, you know. Um, thanks for joining me. I'm here to announce the giveaways. Now, a little brief explanation is that we had to choose only dance participants for this. Um, there were some non really, really good dance submissions, but we couldn't choose, unfortunately. But so we had to kind of put the people in a hat and kind of choose them, the dancers, if you will. And we have chosen for this ad system giveaway. Congratulations, Austin Court. You have won the jersey and shorts. You'll be rocking the full Hawaii gear. And uh, hope you enjoy. We'll be in touch.